just 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 a little bit. The world's getting ready to blow up, so I, you know, I thought, hey, maybe we might have us a little chat here tonight. I mean, I can't think of a better expert in these matters than yourself. Boy, boy, Jamie, man, are we talking? Are we are we are we on the order of prophecy fulfillment, or this is he considers another point of ramp up? I would go so far as to say that's a bold statement. And it could be wrong, but unequivocally, yes. Wow. So, that, okay, that's bold. Yeah. That is bold. Grant yeah. you. Grant you. Yeah, it, it is. It is bold. But when you look at the totality of the of the scriptures and the totality of the circumstances surrounding these current events, with the uh, long-awaited prophecies of you know different different varying verses, it's it's a convergent zenith that just literally happened overnight. You mm. know, so. Well, let's go right into the one I, I was thinking of. Uh, I don't know if we're entering into the seven years or in the middle of it, but there's definitely prophecy about attacking the land of unwalled villages. It looks to me like the whole whole part of uh, southern uh, uh, is Israel is unwalled. It is not. Yeah, it is. And, in, in, uh, in, um, you know, there's that. There's a couple different things that are overlaying right now, and uh, and but yeah, so so what you have going on right now is is what looks like we'll say a high index of suspicion. That'll be the language that I use. High index of suspicion that this is the onset of actually not Ezekiel thirty eight and thirty nine, but of the Psalm eighty three war. So the Psalm eighty three war is a very particular. Uh, uh, future tense prophetic war that has yet to be fulfilled. There's some in Bible scholarship eschatology that would lean towards it was fulfilled during the 1967 war, but it just doesn't fit. It's an impossibility. But what we have unique right now in this uh, current reality, just within the last 12 hours, you know, plus is the nations listed in Psalm 83 converging on Israel in a single instance conspiring in the background, as it says in Psalm 83, the nations are listed by name, uh, the ones that would come against them and how they would come against them and what the effect would be when they do come against them. And already the initial OSINT, right, which is open source intelligence, all the OSINT intelligence out there in the world is saying that it is it is almost a verbatim match, an exact parallel of the Psalm 83 more. So now why that's relevant, and we can get into the details of what's going on right now as far as the the OSINT, you know, the actual open source intelligence with that. But why that's relevant is getting to the point that you just mentioned, um, Daniel, is the coming against the land of all un- un- unwalled villages. And for the listeners that may not be familiar with that language, what he's referencing is the Ezekiel 38 and 30 nine war often associated with gog and Magog of magog and rosh and persia at its helm coming together with another alliance against israel at the same time it says and also at that time there's a very particular word transition that happens within ezekiel 38 that uh some bible translations don't have have and if you don't have it it reads as if it's one successive event but there's that one extra word and the original text it says, and also, and also at that time, they will come against the land of unwalled villages, right? Which uh many of the different, you know, guys that are way, you know, way more scholarly in in in, in adept than what I am would say that that could potentially be a reference to the United States of America, mm-hmm. not Israel itself. Because the initial onset of Ezekiel 38 is specifically mentioning Israel and mentioning Jerusalem and mentioning the alliance of enemies that come against them. But it says, and also at that time, they'll come against the city of unwalled villages. Now, why that's relevant is it's actually relatable to the reality of what's going on right now with um, the Chinese invasion on our southern borders and the impending kinetic invasion of the CONUS, continental United States by both a Russian and a Chinese alliance with proxy states like Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, the drug cartels, and ISIS, and everyone else in mm-hmm. between. It's an allscape. <laughs> so it's interesting that at the same time as this is launching in Israel, we've known and we've been, there's been people warning about it. I warn about it all the time. I've done deep dives on, on the impending World War III and the kinetic invasion of the United States homeland. For years, I've been talking about it. People can go reference that stuff on, on my personal YouTube channel or whatever. 
But it's interesting that at the same time as Chinese generals and colonels are buying 175,000 acres across the Texan border, across the Del Rio, I just had a guy here yesterday who is on site. He's on the boots on the ground, primary source intel, talking about the Chinese coming across where he has a clinic uh, right down there on the Tex Mexican-Texas border, watching 10,000 plus Chinese military aged fighting males a day. Um, through uh, customs and border patrol being given down stand down orders by the Biden administration, and they're going right into a hundred and seventy five thousand acre personally owned piece of property by the Chinese, which has uh, landing strips on it and heavy lift uh, military runways on it, right next to a military base. <laughs> so, so I know I'm fire hose in here, right? But there is a convergent zenith and overlay of the things going on right now in real time. So what's happening in Israel is the most radically significant prophetic, I don't know, exclamation point that we've seen since the 1967 war where Jerusalem was again reoccupied and claimed by Israel after thousands of years and the restoration of even the Hebraic language. This is huge this is radically significant and it's not sensational it's not hyperbolic it's not clickbait worthy stuff like there's a lot of prognosticators and pundits out there that are all clickbaity sensational they're always trying to pull on emotional heartstrings to sell you you know to sell you stuff this is legit empirical objective reality that's just happened in the last 12 hours well, well let me ask you something i i've always understood that Israel had a, a top-notch intelligence community on the order of the United States, maybe some say even better. In fact, I've heard that the United States gets intelligence from theirs. How is it that they missed the, they missed the aligning of 5,000 rocket launchers all aiming toward Israel? They didn't just show up. They were showing up. They were being put in place to, to launch. How is it that no satellite picked up that movement and they didn't have any intel on the ground, nobody on the other side to tell them there's things happening here, they're lining up. It was they they seemed to be caught completely by surprise. Was that was that the script? Yeah. No, that's that's a good point and and hopefully people that have even the most the smallest degree of spiritual discernment ought to pick up on the reality of how did how did this happen? And you're right, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people out there that would uh, that would declare that the U.S. intelligence apparatus is actually subordinate to, to the Mossad, to the Israeli Mossad, and also what we would call the City of London, right? The the uh, British intelligence agencies that we are actually subordinate to them as as the more superior intelligence apparatus. How did we miss that? How did Israel miss it? How did we in Israel, with us as their ally, miss it? Well, man, did you just open a can of worms, Daniel? I mean, you hit the nail on the head of that one. Let's backtrack a little bit. Let's backtrack to the $85 billion of equipment that was left in the desert by the Biden administration for the Islamic Arab nations. Let's backtrack even just a touch more to the pallets of cash that were brought into mm -hmm. Iran to the island of Khomeini by the Obama administration pay to play. And let's not forget the drone technology that was allowed to be captured. Let's not forget the Osama bin Laden uh, raid with major air quotes on that. If anybody knows any reality, Osama bin Laden had died years in advance of the quote unquote Osama bin Laden raid, you know, that was, uh, uh, you know, popularized with Hollywood and everything else in the Obama administration. Uh, let's not forget the technology in that raid that was allowed to fall in their hands with the different stealth technology on the helicopters and elsewhere. And mm -hmm. let's not forget the most recent sending of six billion dollars to Iran by the current Biden administration. So. When you combine this, when you look at it from a bigger macro, you know, 40,000 foot elevation worldview of what's going on here, what's happening is this was a strategic, pre-planned, multi-year, multi-dimensional, asymmetric warfare, uh, faint maneuver, militaristic doctrine with SIGINT, signals intelligence, cyber warfare units, 
infiltration, subterfuge, uh, 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 boots on the ground, like human human intelligence infiltrations of high level commands within Israel to get to this current point. And it was funded, I believe, and equipped by the United States of America working at behest or alongside in some kind of shady, who knows, some kind of shady alliance with both Russia and Iran to get to this point and the other Arab nations. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that ISIS was created and raised up by the U.S. intelligence agency. Let's not forget that the Levant, right, which is a historical uh, ancient holy lands, uh, listed throughout the Bible, were specifically allowed to be blood cleansed by ISIS through the U.S. intelligence agencies. We can't forget that either, right? Let's not forget the reality of what's going on in this region because it's all interconnected. So now I know that that would uh, uh, elicit a natural question in the ears of most listeners. Why would the U.S. want Israel destroyed? Why would the U.S. want I thought Iran was our, our arch enemy. I thought Russia was our arch enemy. I thought Arab nations and the war on terror, right, was our arch enemy. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to go even deeper and farther back to what is coined as the perestroika deception of communism, which theos- which is theosophy only. Communism is only theosophy, which is actually a religious modality rooted in arcane Luciferianism, wow. of which the United States and the city of London, city of London is different than London, the city, if most, most listeners don't know that. It's kind of like the Vatican is different than Rome, right? It's its own independent entity. The city of London is a sovereign piece of territory within London proper, right? Uh, it's, it's all relatable. They're all in cahoots because... Right, we have right now is this again. I, I know I don't want to abuse the term, but a convergent zenith of all things uh, prophetically relevant. And what's happened in the last twelve plus hours is beyond comprehension because it's going somewhere. And I'll let you ask a question or, or, or add stuff to it, Daniel. But and then we can talk about why this is significant beyond beyond comprehension biblically prophetically geostrategically militaristically economically and everywhere else in between well anybody with any reasonable intelligence if they saw these pieces of the puzzle it can can, can only come up with one answer and that is somebody wants world war three to happen somebody wants it to happen and every single move that this country has done is it just is just obviously m- m- moving our country and our, and our geopolitics in that trajectory and empowering our enemies and you've got that right well and we could continue on that there a little bit because those hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of military vehicles plus the planes and the ammunition the millions of rounds that that the Taliban have they want safe passage from Iran to join in the fight so it's likely not only did our 6 billion pay for those missiles that's raining down but we also paid for those military vehicles so it's like we we're paying them to 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 use missiles against them and we pay in the Taliban, we're equipping them to come down and join the fight. This is like America wants it destroyed. And that lame ass little one and a half minute thing that but Biden did eight hours uh, after he had the it, right? start. Biden. Yeah. Oh, Biden. Oh, Biden. Yeah. Eight hours after they, uh-huh. they didn't bother to wake him up because you know, the, 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 the crypt keeper needs to be, you know, get his beauty sleep, you know, but he wakes up, mumbles, mumbles some stuff about, well, like we, we support Israel and, and thank you very much. And muddles off in this world crisis event of this, of this magnitude, that's all he has to say. And he doesn't take questions because he can't for one, but they don't have answers because anything more that they, any more details they give, they're, they're looking to ma- massage or manage the, the optics of the thing. That's what they always do. And that's why the State Department there in Palestine put out that tweet. You probably know about it. It said, "Don't respond. We we don't recommend responding. Yeah. You know, to escalate the situation." Then then they deleted the tweet. But this is how they operate. They let you know what they really think. They think, "Oh, our bad. We didn't mean that." They delete it. Then they proceed to 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 implement what that tweet was really saying. They're going to they're behind the scenes now, probably trying yeah. to twist Israel's arm not to respond. Go ahead. Right. Right. And and the thing is, is like, you know, this thing is happening at such at such a rapid pace. And, and I'm sure 
this is your first time being able to talk about it. This is my first time being able to talk about it. It's happening in such space. So I ask the listeners to be gracious if we miss some details or there's things happening in real time or like you're saying, even that tweet that came out, then they delete it, then they whatever, you know, the numbers of death fluctuate, the things that are going on fluctuate, which is, you know, the nature of any militaristic campaign, you know, as they say, the first casualty in every war is the truth, right? And and so, but what people need to know and understand is that the the only way, the presupposition and the only way that this could occur was with a third party proxy with high technology, high logistical support. This is not a terrorist operation. This is a a significant first world or second world country capabilities being worked through a proxy state as, for lack of a better word, cannon fodder or fall guy or scapegoat or whatever else to exact a particular ends. So the U.S. is rolling it is going to be blurred. Iran's rolling it is certain. Russia's rolling it is certain. Uh, the uh, Wagner Group's role in some of these aspects are certain. Uh, Hezbollah, which is you know, uh, the terroristic organization within Lebanon is absolutely certain. Saudi Arabia has came out and publicly said that they're coming against Israel. Mm-hmm. That's certain. Kim Jong-un of North Korea has publicly come out and said they're in support of Palestine. Uh, they want to see Israel destroyed. Like you said, Taliban is requesting permission to cross through Iran to converge on Jerusalem and ISIS within Iraq and Northern Iraq is wanting to come in. The Syrians are wanting to come in and Egypt is mobilizing in the Sinai on their border. This is Psalm 83 war in real time, ladies and gents, real time. It's going down. And I want to make a distinction here because Psalm 83 war is not the same as Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. It's not the same as Isaiah 17 and thing that's going on in 17. They are this distinctively different prophetic events lots of debate on timing on when these things have lots of debate on on even you know like i think of the seminal work of a Derek gilbert versus like a bill solace who's done a deep dive on psalm 83 i i tell you go reference them right and so you'll get the full context of these different things but regardless of all the debate out there on the timing of these things psalm 83 is what I believe, so, okay, this is going to be Jamie's subjective speculation here, right? So mm-hmm. I'm sh- shifting gears from the empirical and the objective to inform speculation. Okay. If this thing goes the way that it say it's that they say it's going to go, which if people aren't aware, the Israeli ambassador to Russia just made a public statement through the Russian ministry that, I'm paraphrasing, their backs are up against the wall and the nuclear option or what the Israeli Defense Forces and the Israeli Security Council would deem the Samson option is on the table right now in real time. This is an existential threat to the very survivability of Israel. Several air bases have been taken. Several military bases have been taken. Their critical infrastructure is being attacked. The second largest electrical plant in Israel has been attacked. Mm -hmm. Uh, All uh, trains have been shut down. The airports are shut down. The borders are shut down. The education system is shut down. And they literally have armies amassing on every single one of their shared borders. And they don't have a clue what's coming next. They have ordered a ground invasion of of Hamas, which is Palestine or the Gaza Strip. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has officially declared war. He he has made a public pronunciation of a declaration of war that they are a state of war. And they also are under the high index of suspicion that Hezbollah, which is Iran, whatever you use Hezbollah, it's Iran, are mobilizing on their northern border in Lebanon and they're about ready to invade too. At the same time as as uh, Taliban and ISIS are coming across from their eastern flank. And Egypt, nobody knows what's going on with Egypt, is staging on their southern tail. So this is that that alliance of Arab nations distinctly laid out by name, by their ancient territorial names in Psalm 83, converging and conspiring to come on Jerusalem. Why that's significant? is because in biblical prophecy, they make it there. That's why it's significant. They actually press Israel all the way back into Jerusalem. They're without a hope, and they, they're they squeezed all the way back in Jerusalem, and then that's when Gad, God, acts on their behalf. And again, there's 
maybe some overlay going in there with Zechariah 14, which specifically talks again about them coming on Jerusalem, coming to the gates of Jerusalem. They're already to be wiped out. And then there's some, some evidence, speculation, but evidence that the language contained within Zechariah 14 speaks of a nuclear war against the enemies of Israel when they're pushed all the way into Jerusalem. It talks about their flesh rotting off of them while they're still mm-hmm. standing on their feet, their to- tongues rotting on mouth while they're still on their feet. And then there's elsewhere where it talks about the bodies have to lay there for seven months before teams of people, right? Uh, paraphrasing, teams of people are able to go in and actually clean up the bodies, which again, a lot of scholars are looking at that saying that would be similar to what we would expect with the radioisotopes secondary to the use of a nuclear weapon. And you can't go in there and clean up till those mm-hmm. isotopes kind of dissipate, right? And that radioactivity, uh, uh, you get some time and you get some mm-hmm. distance from that and it reduces over time. Then you can finally go in and do that. All of that is systematically being laid out in scriptures. And why that's relevant is because all that must happen for the outcry of the globe for peace and security, for a sharing of Jerusalem and of the Temple Mount, for dividing of Jerusalem between the Jew and the Gentile, which be the Palestinians or the Arabs or whatever else, and a peace agreement would be put in place to last seven years And it's in the middle of that seven-year peace agreement that the Antichrist arises to confirm a covenant that is in place. And it is in that place that he rises. So this Psalm 83 war is so radically contextual, if this is it, looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, could be wrong as, you know, more intel comes out, right? It could fizzle out, but it looks like this is the singularity of the stage being set for the tribulation period. Mm. Now here, I'll say this very, very clearly. I do not believe we are in the tribulation period. I do not believe the seals have been broken. We can debate that all day Mm. long. But I believe that this is one of the most radically prescient, significant indicators of the nearness of the beginning of the tribulation. A lot of bad stuff happens before that actual time period as elucidated throughout many of the scriptures, both Old and New Testament, and obviously consolidated in the book of Revelation itself. There's a lot of prophetic things that happen as a precursor to the inevitability and the imminency of the actual tribulation. This, in real time, is radically significant. And it's leading to the place where an international global governance, the outcry around the world will be so significant that they will come into Jerusalem, they will put it under international global rule, they will set up a two-state solution, they will divide Jerusalem, they will give some to the Gentiles, the Palestinians or Arabs or whoever, Mm -hmm. or an international ability, some to Israel, and as a part of that peace deal, I believe they will be allowed through the Temple Institute in Israel to rebuild the Third Temple, to re-implement uh, the ritualistic animal sacrifices and all the other vestments that the Sanhedrin and all the pharisaical uh, orthodoxy have been training for, even with the red heifer and everything else, mm-hmm. that they that will be one of the conditions of the peace deals. They will be allowed to do that as long as they do this. And it's on that very ground that the Antichrist will rise on the scene overnight proclaim himself to be God, that there is no God. He'll put an end to the daily sacrifices, and then the big show comes. <laughs> so this last 12 hours is more significant than what I think people will understand until it's too late. Mm. I'll tell you what, we've got a bunch of questions. Let's just go ahead and get a couple of them in real quick. Uh, Doreen asked, uh, is this the start of the Gog and Magog war? I think you sort of addressed that. I would say the start of the Magog and Magog War, I would say no, but a a precedent to the Gog and Magog War. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And same thing with like Zechariah 14. It's timing is difficult with biblical prophecy. And God did it that way on purpose. It's it's actually a form of operational security. We'll say it's heavenly OPSEC for the powers of darkness, just like the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They didn't have the full picture. They didn't know operational security. They didn't know that killing Christ was actually their own defeat. 
right? Like God is very strategic in providing operational security. It's the same thing with some of these timings. They're intentionally obscure from the enemy, from the powers of darkness, from Lucifer and all the third of the fallen rebels and their insurgency against the glory of God, right? Through the machinations of men, it's intentionally obscured. So you have, I'm talking about three different sections of, of scriptures here that overlay the timing is I'll never commit to timing because you can't. I would be well, a set, fool. Set a date for me. Very hu- set What's a date up? for me. Set a date for me, man. Yeah, right. Like it would be yeah. very hubristic of me to say, yes, this is the timing. And right. it's like, if anybody's telling you that, I would caution you. All we can do is do our best in the fear of the Lord to hold out the word of truth, right? So Psalm 83 is different than Ezekiel 38, 39, is different than Zechariah 14, is different than Isaiah 17, is different than Revelation 18, yet they look like very similar things are happening at the same time. And there, there is a potential that there is a lot of overlay with those prophetic fulfillments. Uh, well, so, Jimmy, Jimmy, you said there's some people that say the Gog and Magog war is a precedent to their tribulation. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, because of the language contained within there, they're scholarly, right? They go through the Hebrew, they go through the original text. They're they're doing all their prof- re- referencing and the etymology of words that they would subscribe to. The Gog Magog war is actually post tribulation, almost leaning towards. Uh, uh, the end of the millennial reign of Christ. So hmm. that it's it's just there's so many different options out there on what scholars are saying. So that's why I, I go. This is just what it says could be, maybe not. But let's work with what we got. You mentioned God stepping in. How do you see that? Here's what I see. Here here's a key indicator, and I'm going to speak to this very plainly. I'm glad you asked that. Nothing is out of order. Nothing is out of order. It, God is very clear. Can calamity come upon a nation unless the Lord has decreed it? No. Here's what people need to understand as they rally to the pray for Israel, cry, or whatever new Facebook filter is going to come out. The, the praying for Israel, I understand the altruism of it, right? I get it. So I'm not castigating somebody that wants to pray for Israel. We're commanded to pray for Israel. We're commanded to pray for the peace of Israel. But here's what you ought to be praying if you understood God's relationship with Israel. If you're praying for Israel, you ought to be praying that the hearts of Israel, their hardened hearts, finally are replaced with the heart of flesh that beats for God and they look on him whoever they pierce. Christ Jesus, and they acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. All this that's getting ready to happen to Israel is not because the enemies of Israel are getting one over on them. Understand this, listeners. Nobody is getting one over on Israel. This is God's sovereignty. This is God's will. This is God's plan and purpose to crush Israel, their reliance on the United States, their reliance on their Kabbalistic, occultic, Canaanitic practices with their star David, which is the star of every, the worst occultic practices ever. Do not ever wear a talisman of the star David on you as a Christian. That is so unbelievably ignorant of us to do. Uh, it's, it's God doing business with Israel in a very intimate way for the fullness of of time, the fullness of prophetic fulfillment, that finally their heart and hearts, finally, from the beginning of time, they would finally acknowledge Jesus as the Christ. And guess what it takes in biblical prophecy? It takes the obliteration of Israel to where they stop putting their hope open men and in other nations and other cultic practices and in their money and the United States of America and their alliances and their Iron Dome and all their other maneuvers. Mm-hmm. And he rushes them to the point where they look on him who he's pierced. So do not think anything's out of order here. And if you are praying for Israel, secular world using that language, or Christians Do not be so ignorant as to think you should pray for Israel's protection. You should not pray for Israel's protection. You need to pray for God's will Mm -hmm. in the hearts of his people who he covenanted Mm -hmm. with. That should be the singularity of your prayer for Israel. Because God is doing a thing that you don't understand. And actually, when you look at the entirety of the end times narrative, it is not church centric it is not ecclesia centric it is jewish centric it is israel centric it is Mm -hmm. jerusalem centric for a purpose 
It is the fulfillment of what he covenanted thousands of years ago, finally coming into the fullness of fruition Mm -hmm. for the fullness of time. It's the big show, ladies and gents. It is the big show. Do not be deceived by all the heartstring pontification of lukewarm apostate Christians out there. You need to understand God and his word and walk in the fear of the Lord and pray for the will of God over Mm -hmm. Israel, not for uh, the 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 salvation of Israel. You got to pray for the salvation of the of the souls of the Jews mm-hmm. through the true and better Messiah, Jesus Christ, who they have completely denied up until this mm-hmm. point. That's what's going well, on. Well, that's a be- that's a better way to look at it. Absolutely. Another thing is, you, if you just pray for Israel without any uh, uh, thought of it, you'd be praying for uh, uh, Tel Aviv, which is the gay capital of the Middle East. All right. Let's. Uh, here's a question from uh, uh, Doug in Virginia. He says, "I'm looking for." I'm looking for property. Oh, and this must be a Colorado question. I'm looking for property in uh, Florissant, Divide, Cripple Creek, Colorado areas. Are there, are, are there, are, is their future safe? Need some real estate advice. No out idea. There. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you real <laughs> yeah. estate advice. All right. Here's, here's one from Brian says, can you tell us? Here, in- I'll, I'll wait. I'll give you, I'll give you one piece of real estate advice. Get as far away from the Colorado Springs area as you possibly can. It is a top tier target in a first strike or preemptive strike, even in a second strike option uh, against the United States because of continuity of government and everything that's contained within the greater Colorado Springs area, and also DIA and the continuity. Go- excuse me, the continuity of government that's w- within the DIA Denver International Airport complex and the DUMS deep underground military mm-hmm. bases in Colorado and Colorado Springs. That'd be about the only uh, the only okay. real estate advice I would give you is get clear of that area. Well, well, let's let's just let's, just, let's just go a little further with that. Do you would you suggest to the inquisitor that if they live near a um, a top tier site, a target to move, or just uh, wait and see what happens? Oh, dude, yeah, oh, man. Here, let me give you. Here would be my my real estate advice. If you live near a top tier. Uh, targeting, you know, a, a targeted area mm-hmm. in Montana or North Dakota or elsewhere here in Colorado, where I'm at, New Mexico, you know, Dulce, Los Alamos, all the other areas there, uh, Southern California with all of our strategic bases there, submarine bases in Charleston, South Carolina, and elsewhere on the East Coast. Uh, my suggestion would to you would be repent and get right with Jesus and then praise God that a nuke drops on your head. Right? Like if you understand your identity in Christ, you ought to want to be right where the first strike is going to be because you're going to be you're going to be set free from this corruptible flesh into the presence of the king All who right. bought you with the precious blood of his son. You're good to go, man. I want to be <laughs> I want to be right there in the first strike because I know my God and I know the resurrection. I know the hope of glory and I know the glorification that's coming. So that would be my advice. You don't cut and run mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. stay and get in the fight. But mm. you better do it with an identity rooted in Christ, so you're fearless. You're fearless even in death because you know it has no sting, right? Right. So that'd be my advice. Well, see, that kind of reminded me of what Trump said today. He said uh, if he's on a boat and they they're wanting the boats to go electric, and we all know that when there's hurricanes hit those electric cars, they 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 they, they burn up usually. But he said if I had a ch- choice of being on a boat with a big battery going down in the water being electrocuted. Or the shark that's swimming around there and going to chop me up in a little bit of pieces. I'll just take the electrocution and get it over with quick. <clears throat> that kind of reminds me what kind of reminds me what you said. All right. So Brian says, uh, can you have do you have any updates to the New Madrid separation? Salt water is flowing up north into the Mississippi. The west part of the Mississippi is lifting up and showing beach. Well, let's uh let's get into that because that that's actually a prescient question relatable to what we just talked about with the dividing of Jerusalem. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to go on a limb. I could be wrong, but I'm going to go so bold as to say it absolutely is going to happen secondary to what's going on right now in Israel, that they will, there will be a, an outcry through the libtard media for and how and uh, and a rise in anti-Semitism in a way that we've never seen before through all the reprobate liberals, even by the U S elected officials, to broker a peace deal with an international body to divide Jerusalem, to create a Palestinian state and acknowledge a Palestinian state through the United Nations. Back to 1967 borders, they will divide Jerusalem. The U.S. will be most likely at the root of this 
peace deal being brokered. And when they divide Jerusalem, that's when I believe the U.S. will be divided to right smack down the Mississippi River wow. Valley via the New Madrid fault line. So that's very relevant to what this guy asks because it's relevant to what's going on in real time because it says, he who divides my nation or my land, I will divide theirs. Mm. That's that's an immutable truth that God has uttered. God is not a liar. He will never lie. If he said it, you can count on it. So uh, I, I know that there's different naval maps that have been passed around in the last couple of years. FEMA DHS agents and other central planners that have uh, been whistleblowers at the preparation and planning for a radical, significant New Madrid fault line eruption that would actually connect the Great Lakes to the Gulf via the Mississippi River Valley. I am born and raised on the Mississippi River, spent my whole life on the Mississippi River. Wow. I was a police officer on the Mississippi River, firefighter, paramedic. I'm a rescue boat operator and trainer on a rescue boat on the Mississippi River. Everything I know is about the Mississippi River Valley from the Quad Cities, which is two cities on the Iowa side, two cities on the Illinois side of the river. We've trained for it. We've trained for major barge disruptions, you know, all the different dam disruptions and things like that to keep barge traffic open. And the takeout of there's only a few major bridges that cross the Mississippi River. Strategically, you take those out or just cordon them with one vehicle at the other end of the bridge. You just systematically cut the nation in half, right? Mm -hmm. You cut the nation in half. The other significant factor to know about that is that the Mississippi um, River tributaries and the water Mississippi River, sorry, watershed mm -hmm. has the most densely consolidated nuclear power plant plants in North America are within the Mississippi River or watershed. So if there's any type of attack, or a or an eruption. So whether it's man-made, terroristic, you know, foreign adversaries, internal natural disaster, and any sort of the cooling operations of those nuclear power plants gets disrupted for about longer than 72 hours max. I had to train on these things. I was a rescue technician in and around a uh, Fort Byron nuclear power plant. Right? Is um is those things cook off? And you're talking about. Fukushima times 10 plus the U.S. being divided, plus being coordinated in the, in the country being separated in two, plus being divvied up and ripe for a kinetic invasion from the from the northwest, right? The Columbia River Gorge and up through the southern border. And, you know, there's there's high index of suspicion of mobilization of Russian troops on the Minnesotan border as well, too, in Canada with Trudeau coming down when that happens. So, again, I know I'm speaking at a breakneck speed about all these different issues. To. That's how amped up I am right now. Like what's happened when I woke up this morning, started combing through, doing my daily comb through. Then I was going hiking in the high country, right? I live in Colorado. Like I, I, I was going up to tell you, right, to do some, some hiking in the high country. And I woke up, I was like, oh my goodness. Like this thing's going down. This is legit. And I, I don't lend to the sensational, the hyperbolic. Yeah. I'm trying to be objective. Try to be empirical. Try to be like, hey, I'm just going to deal with it. Straight Bible, straight scripture. And I, I'll i add informed speculation. I always give the caveat that, yes, it's speculative. Hello, most prophecy is speculative. Most uh, early events is speculative of where it's going to go. But it's informed speculation. I always try to make that distinction. But man, is it going down right now. Good to know. Well, I'm glad. I tell you what, Jimmy, I'm so thrilled, man, that you was able to come on this show and give us uh, the, the knowledge of that. It, it seems that if the, if the sniffer in chief was really concerned about is Israel's safety, we'd already have our our uh, uh, nuclear warships heading over there to the coast of Israel. We'd they'd already be heading yeah. that direction as a threat, but they're not heading that way. And I'm just wondering. We all know because they continually catch terrorists coming up through our southern border. Now they're coming through the northern border. They seem to be coming here to be in a, a pre-positioned station. So is it likely that they're going to be activated to create chaos in this country so that we're not even able to help Israel or respond to that crisis? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a, that's one of the highest plausible scenarios of how this shakes out. And, uh, and what most people don't understand, if you're new to hearing this type of information, this isn't new information. 
this systematic infiltration and pre-staging of assets, anything from man pads to armored vehicles, to IFV interesting infantry fighting vehicles, and a rocket propelled grenades, crew served weapons, mortar system platforms, uh, the the amalgamation of Russian, Chinese, Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, and the Mexican cartels, which most people don't know, uh, almost all cartels now are bought and paid for by China. The staging of assets, nuclear assets in Venezuela and other Central and South American countries. Cuba, once again, back on the radar. Yeah. And the terrorist training camps just south of the U.S. border, which the DOJ and everybody else is very well aware of, has been going on for 10 plus years. So when this thing kicks off, don't think it happened in a vacuum. It's been, people have been talking about it. People have been exposing it. We have whistleblowers have been talking about it. Jets have dropped out of the sky on our southern border on patrols from electronic warfare weapons. Nobody wants to talk about it, right? Like the infiltration is so whole. Governor, uh, Chinese generals were caught on a high, hot mic discussing Governor Newsom promising them stand down orders when they hit the beaches in Southern California and that they've been promised limited resistance all the way to the Rocky Mountains by the U.S. officials. They were caught on a hot mic discussing that. Wow. And if you think all the ships sitting off the West Coast, hundreds and hundreds of them, because of su supply chain issues with, with uh, the thing, I won't say it so you can post this wherever you need to, because of the thing that happened in the last three years, <laughs> if you think those ships were sitting there full of cheap Chinese crap, you're wrong. Listen to what the Chinese generals, with their war doctrine, and Wei Feng, one of the would, would kind of be like the equivalent of the, of the Chinese head of the Department of the Defense. Actually, a Dave Hodges has done great work regarding this. Uh, I reference him if you want to do a deep dive on mm -hmm. the the actual didactic information on all this. Mm -hmm. uh, they said all those ships were holding all the equipment and troops for a kinetic invasion of the U.S. at the appointed time. And most people don't know that Long Beach Harbor, one of our most strategic deep water ports, which has shipping containers you can't even conceive of. I was just out there a couple months ago to look at it, to lay eyes on myself, really how significant that port of entry is. It was owned by China. And I mean, it goes on and on and on. This thing has been pre-planned. We know about Diane Feinstein and her Chinese, you know, whatever. We know about the Chinese honeypots. We know about Chinese owning the academia. We know about Chinese owning the pharmaceutical companies. We know that Chinese systematically bringing in the opioid pandemic and now the fentanyl. We know about Chinese asymmetric warfare. We know about the last thing was allowed to happen under this administration was the stand down orders as the Chinese spy balloon went over all of our strategic terrestrial based missile facilities in the north to acquire digitally through signals intelligence the codes for the nuclear football that the president had so that they could delay the communication to the missile leaders in the bases. All of that came out. Nobody's talking about it. It came up there. They picked up that balloon when it was out <laughs> of our airspace and a stand down order was issued to NORAD and everybody else to allow it to collect its data. And if it weren't for a guy catching it on his cell phone, we probably would have mm -hmm. never known. Right. So then they stage a little fakey thing where they wait till it's done collecting all its data. Then they shoot it down out over the ocean off the East Coast where nobody could recover the data from it. How convenient. So this is a takeover and takedown from the inside out. Israel is a part of the cannon fodder. Let me add this. Again, I know I'm like all over the place because it's so connected. Ezekiel 38 and 39 specifically talks about hooks being put in the jaws of Gog of Magog and Rosh and these different other entities. It, it actually talks about even a conglomeration of some, some uh, East African and North African countries like Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan, you know, Egypt, all these things, which by the way, they just, they just all entered into an alliance with each other, FedEx fulfillment in real time. But it says that God will put hooks in the jaw mm -hmm. of Magog and drag them like almost against their will into the fight against Israel. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about that, and as soon as this happened, I was like, oh my goodness, I wonder if that's what's going on, is we... 
the U.S. intelligence apparatus blew up Nord Stream One and Nord Stream Two. Everybody tracking? Everybody know that that the U.S. blew up the primary source of all energy for all of Europe on purpose because the petrodollar was collapsing and European nations were pivoting towards Russia. So we actually punched our allies in the face for our own profit. Well, guess what? That will never come back online. Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2, it will never come back online. But there is a particular gas field that got dis discovered. I can't remember now. I used to have it all memorized. Mm -hmm. But we'll say 15 years ago. Don't quote me on that. Off the coast of Israel, in disputed territorial international waters, but some of it runs under the Israeli uh, international waters, mm -hmm. it is the largest gas deposit on the history of the Earth. They, I can't remember how many times beyond what the Arabian Peninsula contains and Russia, if anybody knows how, in, how much of an energy giant Russia is was discovered off the coast of Israel. Guess what they named the gas field that they discovered? Leviathan. They named it <laughs> wow. the Leviathan no way. gas field. Really? The Leviathan gas field. Leviathan, if people don't know, wow. is the chaos dragon, the arcane <laughs> chaos dragon listed throughout scripture. Actually, it's the very chaos dra dragon that's listed within Revelation or Genesis 1 1. The world, ho, the world was tohu and bohu, and the Lord stood over the Leviathan. It says the deep, right? But it's actually talking about the chaos dragon. And it was, and then he spoke over it and started remaking things, right? And so, of all things that Israel, the name, the largest energy reserve on the face of the earth, the sliver, tiny speck of a nation, has the largest energy reserves on the face of the earth, is the Leviathan gas field. And then we just blew up all the energy of Russia that they export and all these other things and of Europe and blah, blah, blah. And we've exported all of ours and gotten rid of all of our strategic ore reserves. And we've decimated our energy protection. And here's little tiny Israel surrounded by nothing but enemies that has the largest energy, energy reserve on planet Earth. I believe... That's the hooks in the jaw of Gog mm. and Magog and mm. Persia and everything else uh. that's going to drag them. They must, for their own survivability as nation states and whatever, and the principalities that rule over those nation states to come against Israel. And again, it's literally happening in real time. Mm. Awesome update on that one there. Uh, Klondike Bob says, uh, Jamie, uh, if Hamas takes out Moderna and Pfizer's headquarters in Israel. Will you be angry about that? <laughs> I bet they didn't think I'd ask that question. Well, for one thing, I love his moniker. That's legit. So <laughs> I know he, I know he's a he's a good old boy. But uh, yeah, I would be super upset. I can't wait to I get my tell. booster. It's like yeah. I mean, I just don't feel complete without it. You know, yeah. I need a little bit of transhumanism in my life. Right. Right. So. Right. 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 But by, by the way, man, and this, this is conspiratorial, man. I, I went so far as to suggest that if somebody changes their DNA in this life, in the next life at the, at the door of heaven, you maybe check to see if you're human first. I'm just saying, hopefully your DNA says that yeah. you are. All right. Um, put Yahweh first says these war events occur or do these war events occur during the fall feasts for a reason? Absolutely. Everything's for a reason. So the Lord is, the Lord is, is so, so orderly. Like he loves, or everything's about the perfection of order. That's all the biblical numerology, right? That's all the, the twelves throughout scripture, which, which presupposes righteous, perfect, perfect governance. And actually those fall feast days must be fulfilled. See Christ Jesus fulfilled at his, for, at the first advent of Jesus Christ, a lot of the the uh, spring feast days were fulfilled, but the fall feast days have yet to be fulfilled. His second coming will be the perfection and fulfillment of all of them, just like at his first coming. To the day, to the hour, to the appointed time. It will be a perfect fulfillment of all things. Why? To reprove God's righteousness, holiness, sovereignty, omniscience, omnipresence, all of it to reprove it. Not one of it is... Not one thing is out of place or mistaken. It's all perfection of of testifying to the true glory that he's worthy of. All right. And then we have this question here. Let's get this up online. Uh, 
What do you think? This is from Klondike Bob again. Uh, Galatians 3.16. I'm not sure what it says. You guys see what's your comment on that? At, I I mean, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Okay. Galatians 3.16. I'm All right. Sure. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that later. Somebody can put that in, in the live chat. All right. So we've got forces lining up. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, but what is... It, it, I know that God sets up leaders and he brings them down. So is, is, uh, is our current office holder for lack of a better term, uh, in the white house, is he put there because of the sins of America? Absolutely. That's the, that, again, man, you, you ask great questions, Daniel. Uh, you know, it's, you have to remember that it says the Lord will choose their delusions. He chooses our delusions for us. And he says, because you love not the truth, he gives you over to a strong delusion that you might believe a lie because you took pleasure in unrighteousness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's Second Thessalonians 2 or 3, right? Romans 1 talks about knowing God. They neither glorified him nor gave him thanks, but he came darkened by the hardness of the hearts. So he gave them over, right? There's a giving over and there's a choosing of delusions. Even God actually speaking to the heavenly host, he says, who will go for me and be a deceiving spirit in the heart of I believe it was Nebuchadnezzar. Don't quote me on that. It might have been one of the kings. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord actually chooses our delusions. He chooses mm -hmm. our deceptions. And he chooses the time of our calamities, right? Again, can calamity come upon a nation unless the Lord has decreed it? No. So even Trump himself was a manifestation of God's doing business with America is what Trump did, which most people, and I don't care if you're, you're rah, rah, you know, toe the line Republicans, Trump is a Kabbalist. Kabbalism is hardcore arcane occultism on a level that you can't even understand. All of Trump's language about reawakening, reawakening, great awakening, blah, blah, and all these different, all of, it's all occultic languages, language that is rooted in arcane Luciferianism. I knew it from the second I heard him speak what he was talking about because I've done a deep dive into that reality. And and not to mention the Kushner family and blah, 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 and all the other There's types. Something Trump wrong. played his part. Now Biden's in to play his part. Everybody else plays their part. They're taking us somewhere. And they're taking us somewhere not because they have superpowers over the human condition and over our psychology. They're taking us somewhere because they're being allowed to, because we're owed it as a nation. We're owed it because of the weak, effeminate claimants of Christianity in this nation that are say nothing, do nothings. Because of the apostate uh, 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 profiteers in the pulpits and these puppet masters pulling on the heartstrings of people, emotionally predatory in every way, because they stand for nothing, they say for nothing, they have no fear of the Lord, there's no fear of the Lord in the land, there's no truth in the land, my people perish for lack of knowledge, and because you rejected knowledge, I'll reject you from being my people. And so definitive. These guys have no power other than what God allowed them to have. There is nothing out of order. So again, I'd always tell people like, oh, we're praying for revival, we're praying for revival. And I'm like, praying for revival? You ought to be praying for repentance. Stop praying for revival. That is so emotionally predatory. You ought to be praying for a humble and contrite heart that God would relent because actually everything that's going on in America, we're owed. We're owed. We're the number one trafficker of the souls of men. We're the number one proponent to the pharmakia, the sorceries of Mystery Babylon, Revelation 18. We're the number one uh, prognosticators of pornography and sex trafficking mm -hmm. and child sex trafficking and adult sex trafficking. We're the, we're the hammer in all the earth. People have no clue what we do with their with our with our economics and how we destroy and we eviscerate and we create. We, uh, Hillary Clinton did the did the Hutu and Tutsi genocide. She did the Bosnia Serbian genocide. They do the Iraq slaughter. Then we do the Libya slaughter. Then we do the Syria slaughter. Then we do the whatever slaughter. Then we do the Vietnam slaughter. And then we do the you know it just goes on and on and on. People have no clue what America is old owed. They have no clue that in order to receive aid from the United States of America, there's 197 countries, I believe, mm -hmm. in the world. And of those 197, I think it's 183 of them receive aid from the U.S. And in order to receive aid from the U.S., it was mandated by Obama nation that you must implement LGBT and abortion in your nation to receive aid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You you don't think we've made the whole world drunk with their immoralities? Victory Babylon? So everything that we see going on is because it is what we are rightfully owed in righteous justice by God. Hmm. Well, I, and I would never, I would never push back on the Lord on that. Never, never would I argue with him or seek to admonish him or bend him to my emotion. Mm-hmm. He's God. I'm not. He gives. He takes away. I repent in dust and ashes over my mouth. And oh, God, do business mm-hmm. in my heart because I know what's coming. Mm-hmm. Well, even even in the Ukraine, uh, they fired their transsexual. I want to say trans sick. I'm trying to put sick in there, but let's just say sexual. Uh, I don't know what is it, attorney, uh, attorney general or uh, secretary of state or something. Uh, and this guy's from America. They fired him, but then they rehired him. They put him back in his position. And I'll tell you what happened. Joe Biden called over there and said, we got more billions to give you, and we're not going to give you the billions put the, before you put that transsexual back in there. And what do you know? SOB, they put him back in there. You talk about exporting yep. our immorality. This country is doing that. But let me ask some more. We haven't touched on enough conspiracies about <laughs> missing people and missing children specifically. We know they're going into child sex trafficking. We know they're being bought and sold, been used by who knows what kind of ungodly hordes of freaks. But is there any truth to the, the internet conjecture, of course, that they're being used for food? Or any humans being um, used for food. I, I know ritualistic cannibalism is is uh, taken off at a breakneck speed. Hollywood elites talk about it. Restaurants in Hollywood <laughs> talk about it. Uh, you have the whole Pizzagate scandal and everything else associated with that. So by and large, I would say no, but absolutely some of, some of them are. And mm-hmm. it's not being that they're being consumed as in food, but it's, it's, it's has to do with the cultic ritualistic practice. Well, I mean, that's so, so, and that may, of course, it, apart from the food part and, and some have suggested there's a, an alien component to that, that, that needs to eat them or whatever. But we do know about the adrenochrome that they're getting that by necessity, doesn't that kill the child the children? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and I mean, this gets into Maui, this gets into Epstein, this gets in, you know, I was a part of a uh, 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 counter child sex trafficking ministry. I lived in the Dominican Republic for several years, fighting that another Caribbean island, right? Not too far from the other islands in the Caribbean that are doing mm. the same thing. Mm-hmm. And guess who ran all that down there was the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian mob was running all the kids on the islands while we were down there. And guess what they would say for the U.S. elite. And they were being shuttled over to Ukraine. So if you think Ukraine has anything to do with Russia wanting to do a land grab, that's not at all what's going on over there. That has nothing. Why do you think we're throwing billions and billions? I don't even know. What are we at? 800 billion? 300 billion? I don't even know what the number is. And everything else, it, it all comes back to Luciferianism. Has nothing to do with normal modalities of the pride of man or the hunger and insatiable appetite of tyrants for power and control we crossed that rubicon pre or post world war one at the onset of world war ii through the Thule society and the real maidens of hitler and the worship of the black sun and this resurrection of all this arcane wickedness beyond comprehension including the blood cleansing of the land of europe of Jews, that's why they chose incinerators. It, they needed the ashes for their cultic practices to literally do a land cleansing of Europe of any Judeo Christian values. Most people don't know that because they don't understand the occultism of the Nazi regime. What even is a swastika? Hello, start digging into stuff, right? Like, what were the investments? What? Why did they wear that? Why did they do that? Like, what's it related? And what was going on at these different temples and these worship of the Black Sun and all this stuff? What's going on in Antarctica? Like, so that that arcane way of just the the tyrants, you know, our wicked men wanting more power and insatiable appetite. That ended with World War One, and, and after that bloodshed, I believe a. a a tail, a tear in the veil occurred where now it's only through a lens of supernatural, multiverse, multi dimensional, cosmic supernatural warfare in the seen and unseen realms. And it's been raging since post World War One. And it is, and, and what happened post World War II? Oh, that's right. Israel became a nation overnight. 
like prophetic fulfillment on a level you can't even see. And the Lord specifically said, those who saw Israel become a nation mm -hmm. will see the return of Jesus Christ with their own eyes. The same generation will see all these things take place. And guess what? We're right at the end of a biblical generation from 1948 to where we're at right now. Bible says 70, sometimes 80, 80 year, 80 mm -hmm. years from 1948. What's, where does that put us at? Oh, that would be 2028. What would it be three and a half years, which right. is the midpoint of the tribulation right. behind right. 2028? Mm -hmm. That would put us mid 2024, right? Into 2025. What's every depopulation agenda? What's the great reset? What's the blah, blah? What's the apophis asteroid that's coming in 2029? That'll be visible in the sky in 2025. It's all the same exact parameters that God already told you biblically he's going to operate within. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that uh, God picks the delusion of of nations. Uh, obviously, there's some sort of spell cast on at least half of the United States, probably a lot more than that, that men can be women and, and on and on with that. I mean, it's obviously insane kind of thing, but that's some kind of spell that's been cast. So their, their delusion is... I mean, it's the classic right is wrong and wrong is right, but I mean, it's, it's, it's more, it's more evil than that. It's, 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 it is bigger than that, Daniel. It, it's rooted in, it's actually rooted in the district of Columbia. And most people are like, who's Columbia? What's Columbia? What's the Statue of Liberty? Why is she holding that torch? What's that representative? Why did Obama graduate from Columbia University, supposedly? And a lot of presidents from Columbia University. Why do we have the largest Egyptological monument on the face of the earth that's 666 feet and 66 inches tall across from a dome-shaped building in the District of Columbia in every state capital in the United States of America. Why does the Vatican have the same thing? Why does Paris, France have the same thing? What? Nobody asks these questions. No. It's Inanna, Colombia, ISIS, Ishtar. Why do we call ISIS ISIS? Right? Like, what that you think that is like, you know, the, this stupid perversion of what they say it means? ISIS is a particular deity. Easter is a particular deity. I will not ever celebrate an Easter Sunday ever in my life. It is the most arcane, occultic, Luciferian worship that you could ever do to celebrate Easter. Even hide it. And the Christian churches are putting little yard signs and throwing Frisbees in their neighbor's <laughs> yards to invite them to right. Easter service, right? It's so ridiculous. But at the root of that, Daniel, is actually this transitional nature of mm. these arcane principalities that is key to them they are all androgynous look at the buffoment right the satanic mm -hmm. statue right, right. Mm -hmm. it's androgynous it has male and female counterparts a lot of the uh uh greek roman canaanitic phoenician sumerian worship of these arcane gods which were real they weren't myth they were real deities had this transitional nature even in their physicality and their DNA, it's terraforming. They're terraforming the earth for what comes next. They're terraforming the earth for the arrival of the Antichrist on the scene. And this is a necessity to them. It's literally the district of that stuff. And everything is surrounded around the worship of that stuff. That's why they built all the iconography within Washington, D.C., after all the ancient pagan temples, including the temple at Pergamon, which is mm -hmm. the seat of Satan. Mm -hmm. Literally, the seat of Satan is the temple of Pergamon, spoken of very clearly in scriptures in the book of Revelation, and we build our capital buildings as an exact representation of the seat of Satan. Wake up, Americans. Wake up. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this faulty patriotism is insane. You have no idea what the undercurrent has actually been for a great deception since the 1600s with Sir Francis Bacon and Adam Westhoff and their desire to see the rising of the Atlantean age and the return of the golden age of the gods in the new land of North America. Why? Because all the arcane occultic things they found here, the mounds of Cahokia, the serpent mounds of Ohio, mm -hmm. the Egyptological things in the upper peninsula of Michigan, all the, the, the tombs of pharaohs found within the Grand Canyon and the greater mm -hmm. Grand Canyon right. here. Why do you think it's called Los Angeles, the city of the angels? What angels? The fallen angels. Why do you think it's America? 
Amaruka, the land of the winged plumed serpent, the seraphim, the Nakash wow. from the Garden of Eden is what this very land is named after. Hmm. And you think, rah, 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 God and country. You're like, you couldn't be more wrong. Now, those things are good. I'm not saying don't support. I'm not saying don't stay in the fight. I'm not saying don't be an activist. But I'm saying wake up and to, to the reality of what comes next. Hmm. Because if you are not secure and hidden in Christ, I assure you, you will be cannon fodder in a war you don't understand. Wow. So that brings us to this point. As we know, the, the world events have turned into a terrible projection of what could possibly be uh, where we are in the biblical prophecy. But um, what, uh, what do you recommend people do? Should there be a response? Should we oh, have man, a response? I, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I go back to the basics every time. Repent for the day the Lord is at hand. I mean, I mm -hmm. I could offer all kinds. I have a background, you know, Marine Corps, infantry, Sergeant of the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. and law enforcement, worked with U.S. Marshals, paramedic, firefighter, tactical unit. I mean, yeah, I could give you all kinds of tangible things. But I know because I've operated in, in semi-permissive and non-permissive environments all over the world in a lot of different capacities. And I know the word that none of that tangible stuff is going to save your hide mm -hmm. an identity in christ alone will mm -hmm. a move of the holy spirit in you supernatural mm -hmm. provision water from a rock <laughs> grain grains coming from the heavens right the lord routing mm -hmm. foreign armies in your midst making you strong and mighty in battle like the days of joshua the sound of worshiping warriors like in the days of jehoshaphat routing foreign armies the days of gideon where the glory goes before you and the dread of the lord is on your enemies i know that nothing's going to suffice apart from that because I know what's coming because I know the word. And mm. I know the tangible side of the house and I've seen what happens in, in collapsed governments, collapsed environments, war-torn environments, natural disaster environments, oh crap environments. I've operated in all of them all over the face of the earth. And so I can say unequivocally, the only thing, the only thing that's going to matter is that you are so rooted in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. And he is your portion in your drink that nothing else would matter. And then watch what he'll do on your behalf. Come forward with your loaf and your fish. And then trust in the Lord and watch what he'll do. Watch him multiply it. Watch him make you mighty and battle. Watch him take a 14-year-old boy who so all he has is a sling and a stone and take down a Nephilimic freak show who's mocking his name. Mm -hmm. Watch what he'll do with a heart that is fully committed to him. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the holy earth. Mm -hmm. To strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to mm -hmm. him. Oh, and Daniel eleven thirty two, those hey, who know well, their God. It's talking about the time of the likes of which never will be and never will be again. It says at that time, those who know their God will be strong and they will go do, forth and, and do, do daring feats of valor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want in on that action. Mm -hmm. So I want to know <laughs> my God. I don't want to know. I, 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 I don't want to know my preps. You know. Everybody needs to be an expert. But speaking speaking of uh, miraculous events that can that can transpire in one's life, uh, did you not have one regarding uh, your son? Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just, can you speak that just a second? It's been three weeks ago now. Yeah. So yeah, my son. Uh, I'll, I'll give cliff notes, and um, I have no charismatic, hyper emotional Pentecostal background, right? So <laughs> let me give that as a qualifier. Uh, but my son fell out of a tree in a bank parking lot and he broke his skull. He had a basilar skull fracture bleeding from his ears and he broke his spine in two places. So he had, he had uh, two thoracic spinal fractures and um, took him to the hospital, took him to the yard, ER, did all that, getting ready to life flight him to the, uh, you know, a neurologic specialist in Denver. Uh, long story short, they, they allowed me to, to monitor him without flying him up there and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And um, as I'm weeping over my son, which I've never weeped that way before, mm -hmm. and I'm weeping over my son, I've I could never imagine that I could see my son in that estate, um, you know, in and out of consciousness, pain beyond comprehension in his back and in his head. They put him in like this little body cast rigid thing to protect his spine before until he could see his specialist. Mm -hmm. And um, and as I'm weeping over my son, uh He's, he couldn't even talk and he started, he started eking out words and I, I didn't even know what was going on. And this went on for, for about 10 minutes. And I realized that he was trying to worship. 
my son's 11. Mm -hmm. He was trying to worship. And I'm like, I think he's trying to, he's trying to sing to the Lord. And I was just weeping and weeping and weeping. And like the longer he worshiped, his voice got stronger and stronger and stronger. And I was praying, God, heal my son. God, heal my son. Oh, please, God, heal my son son god spare my son let make him be able to walk make him be able to run you know to be a mighty warrior in your hands and the lord rebuked me as my son's eking out worship and i'm literally laying on him like elijah like laying over his body and just sobbing on him crying out to god and he said stop asking me to heal him you heal him i've already given you all that you need and i was like like clear as day heard it clear as day and i was dumbfounded i was shocked i felt awkward i felt insecure i didn't want to i felt foolish and i didn't want to it took me about five minutes of praying to humble myself because i was like what me you know like it just didn't like never even crossed my mind it's like no that's on you lord to heal him and finally with like total feeble shaky voice and insecure doubting thomas reality mm -hmm. i just said finley his name's finley mm -hmm. i said finley you're healed in the name of Jesus. And I kid you not, he sat up, he puked all over the place, and uh, and he looked at my wife and smiled, and he said, I feel all better now, Mama. All the pain's gone. Wow. Insane, right? I'm like, yeah. no, and I'm just sobbing and sobbing, and I'm praising the Lord, my wife's praising the Lord, and we're just like, oh, my goodness. And I still was like, didn't know what to do. Like, what do we do? Like, is it, you know, like, his, his back's broken in two places, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, but it was three days later when we finally had our follow-up. We kept him in his thing. I didn't know what to do. We are just praising God. He got up and started walking around. He started messing with our dumb kitten, our ninny kitten, right? And he was like totally acting normal. I was like, no way. He wasn't even talking five minutes ago. And so we went to an orthopedic specialist three days later. They redid all the imagery that we had gotten four days prior. And uh, he looked at it and he said, uh, there's no fractures. There's no fractures in his back. There's no neurological damage. I don't know what to tell you. Take him out of the brace. He can take him home. He's fine. There's wow. nothing wrong with him. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. I don't know if they misdiagnosed him on Friday. He goes, but I have the imagery, the CT scans with contrast. I see the fractures. I just redid the imagery. There's no fractures. He's fine. Take him home. And we literally took his brace off and took him home. Wow. So, Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like I don't know. And I and and I was praying through like, Lord, what are you doing? Lord, what are you doing? Lord, what are you doing? He's like, What's coming next? You need to know me in a new way, not a different way. A whole new way, not just a different way. And so I've been wrestling it out. What does that look like? But again, it's all prescient, even now, realizing what just happened today with Israel. Mm -hmm. We do need to know the Lord in a new way, mm -hmm. and we need to be ready to operate in stuff with the Spirit of God that we haven't had to in a very long time in the confines of Western-centric, evangelifishton mm -hmm. Christianity. Right. For instance, uh, the, the the thought that if something goes bad, you're just going to be raptured right on out of here because you're a special American, and you're so good. Yeah, right? good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I, I say, please go tell your Chinese brothers and sisters that they're that you're going to be raptured out of here. Like, go meet with them in the underground church and go sit with them as they rape the men because they don't rape the women. They rape the men to break them and they don't arrest them and then they leave them there. Go do your research. Go sit with them. Watch them be raped for the testimony of Jesus Christ and then smile really big with your with your reprobate Starbucks in your hand and tell them you're going to be raptured out of here. Go tell them it, you know, go tell your brothers and sisters in Iraq that I was literally over there in 2014 with the Peshmerga fighting against ISIS on behalf of our brothers and sisters. Go tell them who have seen multiple family members beheaded, literally beheaded for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You go tell them that you're going to be raptured out of here because um, you couldn't go shop at Home Depot without wearing a mask. And it really upset your paradigm. So the rapture must be right around the corner. Go tell them. <laughs> That's what I say. Like, I got no tolerance for that 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 American evangelical arrogance. No tolerance. Mm. Wow. All right. A couple more questions here. Um, is From Australian Ben, uh, is America Babylon and is a Statue of Liberty, Lucifer, the light bearer. Yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> so it, it's my opinion. There's a lot of different ones out there. This is my, my research opinion. 
because of knowing behind the scenes and areas that I've operated in, I've got to peek behind the veil that America, America to me is unequivocally mystery Babylon. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competing opinions. That's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. So I subscribe that America is unequivocally mystery of Babylon beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's never been a nation like it. I have a degree in history, studied a lot of comparative history, studied the occultism, studied the days of Noah, antediluvian stuff, been on expeditions, you know, by, by God's grace with Timothy Alberino, you know, studying this stuff all over nice. the face of the earth. So I'm coming at it from a very primary source reality that America is unequivocally mystery of Babylon. And to the second question, what was the second question? Because it was yesterday. Uh, is, uh, is the Statue of Liberty, uh, Lucifer, the light bearer? Statue, the Statue of Liberty is, is the feminine, they would call it the feminine aspect in the cultism of, yes, Lucifer, the light bearer. Hmm. And, and look at all the shape of the platform that it is mm. on and blah, blah, blah. Octagon. And nobody's even convinced that it's actually a, uh, a woman, you know. And then again, there's even speculation <laughs> wow. as to that. So, uh, We're looking yeah, at and, and the points on the crown. And, and you can go back to ancient Sumer. That is a high, high-ranking principality rebel of God that has been worked through every single culture to where we chose that as the number one symbol representative of America. And again, it's the feminine aspect. So that even gets into the harlot and the whore and the blah, blah, blah. blah. And she sits on the, the daughter of Babylon. It talks about Mr. being a daughter of Babylon. So it's not Babylon pop, pop, proper. It's not ancient historical Babylon and all their wickedness. It is the daughter of Babylon. It is an offspring of that made manifest once again on the earth statue mm. of liberty statue yeah. of columbia isis ishtar mm. simi ramas so that's Ishtarte, all Inanna. yeah yeah so, yeah so uh yeah man somebody needs to look under un under that statue's dress to find out for sure man <laughs> we, we could have a michelle <laughs> well, could have a michelle go, go crocodile dundee on her right all like, right man we could have a we could have a michelle obama situation happening all right grumpy old army vet says how close are we to a full-scale invasion from china and russia how close could, couldn't know so could couldn't say but i you try to make the distinction between inevitability and imminency mm -hmm. i just try to make that distinction it it is absolutely inevitable the inevitability is certain the imminency seems close at hand but again the lord's mm -hmm. the one who's in control of all that i mean every detail when he says go today's the day it will be the day. It says suddenly, in an instant, in a single day, in a single hour. The suddenly, the suddenly, the suddenly. Mm -hmm, you can suddenly. look at visions from a David Wilkerson or a Henry Groover or a Corey Tenmu. All kinds of people have all seen the same exact event. I personally have had three very significant dreams from the Lord uh, about Chinese invasion. Never saw Russians. Strategically Chinese every single time. They're everywhere all at one time, instantaneous, and it was wholesale genocide in every single dream. Mm -hmm. And in every single dream, the same response of the American, or the, the posture of the American populace was the same. They were so shocked and awed that they weren't even scared because they didn't even understand what they were looking at and what was happening. Same thing in every single dream. So I believe that all from OSINT, open source intel and, and, and other things, that... Um, that all the preparatory logistics, which it takes about five years of hardcore logistics before any sort of kinetic thing, that's military doctor 101, mm -hmm. that all of it's in place. Even all the high level buy-offs, payoffs, infiltrations, comms, telecoms, the grid X one drill, the grid X two drill, the whatever, like they have been allowed to be involved in all these, the purchasing of lands, the giving of the mineral rights in the national parks, the purchasing or deep water ports, the staging of assets through a uh, supply chain all over the country, uh, the infiltration of higher academia, the infiltration of the Congress, infiltration of Senate, the infiltration of the judicial, the infiltration of, of uh, how many road inspector inspectors, They've all been caught taking money from China. Mm -hmm. It's done. Mm -hmm. All of it's done. It's in place. So I anticipate that it could just happen. It will literally, like scripture says, in a single day, in a single instant, when everybody's going about business as usual, it just happens. And guess what, ladies and gents? It just happened to Israel. 
in an instant, in a suddenly, in an hour, they were everywhere, taking down bases. Israel is the most of offensively and defensively postured nation on the face of the earth. They're surrounded by enemies. They're the most hyper vigilant nation militarily and strategically and with their intelligence apparatus on the face of the earth. And in a single hour, they were overrun mm -hmm. from every single angle. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. God. God. That's how it happened. And it will be the same thing for the United States of America. Israel's the type and shadow. Hmm. I mean, well, Israel is actually central. Israel is a singularity. The U.S., I mean, we should be taking heed. And I know we talked about what should we be doing. There is practical preparation. I don't dismiss that. I'm all about that. There's practical preparation. Use your mind. Be prudent. Don't do it out of fear. Don't do it with chaos in your spirit. Don't do it with some anxious striving. Do it because you're prudent you know the Lord, you know the word, you see the handwriting on the wall, and by faith you practically prepare and you train for the fight you're not yet in. That's hmm. what I would say. All right. Uh, looks like we had maybe one more question here. It says, uh, God says Satan will be unchained and be set loose on the world for a season. Uh, the Statue of Liberty has broken chains at its feet. A season is a quarter of a year, a quarter of a millennia is 250 1776 plus 250 equals 2026. There's some numerology there. Does this confirm end times that Babylon falls in 2026? Did you not mention 2026 just a while ago? Yeah, I did. I mean, 20, 2024, from here on out, everything's changing, right? And 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 I won't get into it. It's too late in the show. But for me, the centrality of everything, including the mega depopulation agenda, the thing that they just put in everybody's body, the chemtrail and the GMOs, the uh, survival seed vaults, the, they need World War III. They must have a limited, uh, that's a qualifier, limited nuclear exchange, the supply chain consolidation, the digital IDs, the central digital currencies, all of it is through the lens for me, the singularity of Apophis, of this impending astrocatastrophism, the celestial event, which is the centrality of what's going on in the book of Revelation is this this breaking of the seal and this blowing of the trumpets of these celestial events that all the global elite know and in order to prepare for it they must do as much depopulation as possible because they've run simulations in 2019 right before trump initiated space force lo and behold after running simulations of an asteroid a shotgun burst asteroid impact over one third of the earth Listen to their language, read your Bible. One third of the earth, one third of the trees being destroyed, one third of the grass being burned, one third of the fish of the sea, one third of the ships, one third being destroyed by these things falling from the heavens and destroying the earth. Their findings in the simulation in 2019 were that the number one threat was not the asteroid and the loss of human life and the disruption of critical infrastructure. The number one threat was the human chaos factor. That's what their findings were and the central planning simulations that they ran in New York City in mm -hmm. 2019. Mm -hmm. So guess what their conclusion was? Massive depopulation ASAP. Guess when that simulation was? May 2019. Let's fast forward a couple months to event 201 and the thing and then the stuff and now the incessant insatiable appetite for World War III and the consolidation and everything, the tearing down the economies, the great reset, and all of it is centered on the same exact time frame that it has to be in place before this apophis. Go read Dr. Tom Horn from uh, Dr. Tom Horn's book on the Wormwood Prophecy if you want all the mm -hmm. detailed explanations of what all the space agencies are saying. Uh, base, it will be visible in the sky, according to NASA, in mid to late 2025. And once you can see it, game's over. Human Chaos Factor 101. So notice when they're rolling out of the Gerard Butler movie, Greenland, mm -hmm. right? And what that's mm -hmm. all about and blah, blah, blah. And all these, like, in in the Deep Impact and all, all the predictive pro programming that's been going on Netflix reprobate show. Don't go watch it. But it's <laughs> called Don't Look Up. And it's that all the central governments knew an asteroid was coming. And they didn't tell the people mm -hmm. until it was visible in the sky. And then when it was visible in the sky, the human chaos factor happened. And they had to create a global information campaign, disinformation campaign, to convince people not to look up and acknowledge what everybody could see in the sky was coming to destroy the Earth. So wait, wait I know I just opened a whole new can of worms right at the end of the show. But that's the context with which I see 
all of this and this is why the time frame and even what's going on with israel and israel saying they're going to use nuclear weapons and the u.s pushing israel to use nuclear weapons the u.s pushing russia to use nuclear weapons and uh pakistan and india want to use nuclear weapons because of Kashmir and and south korea put 51 million citizens in underground bunkers for a nuclear training deal training drill because north korea is going to use nuclear weapons and on and on it goes is because they mu- they're they all unified. All the global elite are unified that they must depopulate instantly, quickly, before this thing is visible because you can't control the human chaos factor. You need a central currency. You need a central media. You need a central government. You need a centralized supply chain. You need centralized distribution. And you need centralized law enforcement. That's why mm-hmm. all this stuff is going on. Why did the? Why do you think they rolled out that uh, cell phone test the other day? What was that all about? I I think there's natural processes. You know, I don't go crazy crazy conspiratorial on that. There's Mm -hmm. natural things that central planners do, and telecoms testing is a a normal thing. It's Mm -hmm. it wasn't it it wasn't a bit. It didn't get my spidey senses up on that. I I didn't didn't see nothing. Yeah, they know where it's coming. It's pre planned. They're doing what they need to do to get ready for the kinetic stuff mm-hmm. notice russia did it at the same time sweden finland norway romania slovenia i mean slovenia they're all doing it estonia latvia they're all doing it they, everybody knows what's coming and in fact like we we come in full circle to the beginning of the show how did hamas which when you hear hamas think iran and russia right mm-hmm. how did hamas do what they did today and are it's ongoing there's people dying in the streets and old men and old women are being slaughtered at bus stops i've seen the videos i've seen the pictures i've seen the barracks of israeli troops slaughtered in their bunks that's how quick and hard this hit that they were slaughtered in their bunks the most hyper vigilant military in the face of the earth was slaughtered in the racks at night this is insane right but mm-hmm. notice how That could only happen if there was years of planning in advance, years of logistics and human intelligence and signals intelligence and cyber warfare and cyber intelligence and strategic infiltrations and larcenies and subterfuge and tactical decapitations of key leaders and all this stuff. All that's been going on in the background and it's all what's going on in the background right now, uh, even with the United States of America. And again, it is all interconnected. we got to get macro Otherwise, we're going to get lost in the weeds. All right. Uh, Jimmy Walden, awesome as always. And what a day and a time that we're living in. Uh, Be prepared uh, spiritually. Sounds like the number one thing. Of course, repentance is in order for all of us. So I think that's uh, obviously good advice for what's coming. We should read our Bibles to know so we won't be taken unawares. Uh, God's elect hopefully won't be deceived. So we need to stay tight. Any final thoughts uh, about uh, what's going on or anything else or prayers, whatever you want to do, you go right ahead. Oh, you know, I just think like what, what Christ admonished his disciples to do. He didn't say when you begin to see all these things taking place, hide yourself in your prayer, prayer closet and wait for the wrath of God to mm-hmm. pass you by. That's not what he said. That time's done and over with. He should have been doing that years ago. What he does say is when you begin to see all these things taking place, wars and rumors of wars, ethnos against ethnos, right? Earthquakes, pestilence, famine in diverse places, all this stuff, all the supernatural stuff breaking out of scene. He said, and when you begin to see it, you stand up and you look up because your redemption draws nigh. Mm. You don't hide yourself in your prayer closet. You get in the fight, spiritually, emotionally, physically, if it's required of you, for the glory of God. And if you don't know your God, don't worry about anything else. Turn off me, turn off Daniel, turn off every other latest, greatest sensational intel thing out there that you're you're feeding, you're getting your little dopamine drip from. Turn it off and do business <laughs> right. with the holy God who loved you so much that while you were his enemy, he gave his son's life for you so that he mm-hmm. could call you friend and call you son and call you daughter and give you a hope that nothing in this world can touch you. And he's already conquered death itself. Hmm. That's what you ought to be doing. Wow. Wow. All right. Now I know that I've got in the background, I've got this book that you wrote. I know that you've just been out for a while. Uh, how can people get it if they want it? Yeah. If people want to uh, get Omega Dynamics, equipping a word class of Christians for the days ahead, you can purchase it at 
Amazon. You want to know why? Because not one Christian publisher would touch it. I went everywhere and they wouldn't touch it because it wouldn't pull on heartstrings. Mm. And so I had to self-publish it. And the only place I could do is Amazon. So don't send me nasty grams about Amazon. (laughs) That's it. Okay. Well, Jamie, well, man, thanks again for coming on the show in this time and day and age, man. You just, you just, you bring it every time, man. And I'm glad that, uh, that it happened. Really, I'm kind of glad if it's going to happen. I'm glad it happened today and that you were scheduled to be on the show today. I know. What? Uh, yeah. I mean, only the Lord for me. And it's crazy. You know, it's funny. I talked to my wife on, on, uh, on Monday and she said, Hey, what are you going to preach on next week? I'm like, I just keep hearing this word time rolling around in my head fullness of time and fullness of time and a point in time. I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to wrestle that out. So I spent all day Thursday and Friday working on a sermon for this Sunday. And it's all about the fullness of time, the appointed time, the arrival of time and all this stuff. And then this happened today. Hmm. And and then that just happens to be, and I'm like, I don't know the Lord's sovereign to do that. And I don't know where it all goes, but I know where I'm going. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay. All right. Well, Jimmy, well, again, thanks for coming back on the edge program. Yeah, thanks for having me on, brother. It's always a pleasure. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. There.